Evening ladies and gentlemen, firstly, forgive me, the lighting is absolutely terrible. I've got two phones here, I didn't bring the selfie light, gonna go pick one up tomorrow. But what do we know? Like, just because you can't really see me clearly, that's irrelevant. We're here to talk about Bitcoin, the markets, and what we can expect going into Asia. Well, let's just put things into perspective first. It's not looking good for Tesla. That's all I've got to say. And Tesla, with a relatively decent market cap, can put a bit of pressure on the marketplace. But Tesla's like Bitcoin. When people see it at a discount, they will step in and sweep it up. Tesla is tipped to have its worst earnings announcement in seven years. That's not good. But on the brighter side, stock market did relatively well today. Bitcoin did relatively well today. And in tonight's live stream, I'm going to be talking about a trade that I took today. It was only a quick trade on the S&P. And I'm going to help you guys understand the bids and the asks because fundamentally in the game of trading, if you're not paying attention to the bids and the ask, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to gauge the idea of where price is likely to go. So we're going to be doing that and then we're going to be diving into a couple of questions regarding the bid and ask and then we'll call it a night. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah? Cool. So with that being said, if you do like tonight's flavour, even though the lighting is terrible, be sure to like on the way out and subscribe on the way out. But make sure you hit the bell. Something fishy is going on. You, some of you guys ain't getting the notifications. Probably because you may not be hitting the bell, but even those of you who are hitting the bell, still not getting the notifications. Are we being shadow banned by YouTube? Nah, nah, that can't be the case. That can't be the case. But more importantly, I hope you're all doing well this evening. It's now, what time is it? It's now 12 a.m. Cyprus time. So yeah, it's a little bit late and Let's just start talking some charts, man. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get this program sorted. Off we are. If we are. What a guy. What's he talking about? Anyways, Tino, does red, Tino in red, does that mean we're going down? Listen, let me, I'm going to explain tonight what needs to happen for Bitcoin to continue up. Now, if you are of the impression that Bitcoin is following the stock market, now let's just put some facts for those who are like, no, Bitcoin can never follow the stock market. It's onto its own. I'm Bitcoin maximalist. Oorah. No. Okay. Firstly, before the ETF, what was Bitcoin doing? Nothing. It was recycled money. It was the same people in crypto buying and selling. How boring is that? ETF comes into play. We get some flavor. We get some volatility. We get some liquidity from dearly beloved Wall Street. So you can say that the trillion dollar market cap that's been added to cryptocurrency is countable to Wall Street. Cool. But this earnings season is going to be the deciding factor if investors are just going to shrug off the idea of what's going on with the Fed and the lack of hope that they're going to be cutting the rates or the fact that inflation isn't bothering anyone and that investors are just in it just to make a penny or two. This earnings season, especially from the Magnificent Seven, needs to show robust earnings announcements. That means Meta needs to do very well. Nvidia needs to do very well. Tesla, <laughs> It doesn't look like it's going to be doing too well. So you can already take Tesla off the board. We need Microsoft to do very well. And the one thing that we need to really be paying attention to is not more, more so, I would say we want to be focusing on sales more than revenue. Because sales means people are spending money. New contracts are being pr pr produced. That means people are getting involved, having meetings. Yep, I want to buy that contract. I want to get involved in this. I want to service this cloud system. I want to use Microsoft. I want to use Google, Alphabet. I want to use their service for cloud. I want to use your services. That means a sale is going to be coming through. 
We want to really see the sales rather than the revenues. Revenues are good. Don't get it twisted because the revenues can come from all sorts of things. Reoccurring subscriptions, but that's not new business. We need new business. And if any of the Magnificent Seven do not show an acceleration in their earnings, or should I say their sales, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem for investors to believe that the rally to the upside can be sustained and just buoy off the idea that even though the Fed may not be cutting the interest rates, what will be the next thing for them to do? Like if, if, if the stock market can't produce the results, then there's nothing else to do but consolidate. Now, articles like this, we're getting the party started, okay? And this is what this article goes on to suggest. It goes on to talk about the idea why the market needs to see robust earnings from the Magnificent Seven just to warrant the idea that price or assets are going to continue to go up because assets across the board are overly valued. The yield has been picked up and absorbed like no tomorrow. And what I mean is in terms of yield, if you had purchased a certain amount of stock for a certain period of time, the return on that would have yielded you a very handsome return. Now the earnings need to surpass the previous earnings and they need to come in way better to even promote the idea of assets continuing up. Otherwise, it's yippee to the downside. Cash is king and dollar will continue to go up. And that is where Bitcoin in principle should shine. But if you've got nearly a trillion dollars of capital from Wall Street going into the ETF, two and two makes four. It makes you think, OK, they're going to be pulling it from the Bitcoin ETF. But one thing that not many people really focus on is ETFs and money markets. And that's where a lot of investors will traditionally go because they can go to ETFs as a form of a hedge. Well, there's a Bitcoin ETF. So why don't they load up on Bitcoin? It's a scarce resource. Happy days. It's a commodity. That's the logic, in my opinion. Now, to put things into perspective, how do we know that the stock market's not really exposing itself to risk just yet? Well, if we go over to this chart right here, you can barely see. I know it might be a little bit too bright for you, but if we zoom in, can you see that, guys? What's going on? Talk about how... <laughs> Listen, I'm going to talk about XRP, okay? Tesla will keep dumping, I will buy. Listen, if Tesla, listen, if Tesla breaks $100, I personally believe that Tesla is going to trade very aggressively. It's going to be, see a sharp reversal. They did it last time, all right? There was dire news announcements. Categorically across the board, the market was just not looking favorable. Tesla steps into that $100 zone, my days shot back up. So it's going to be very interesting to see if it does break that zone. Now, this is the chart that I'm talking about. This, this is what we guys need to really understand. Right now, the current outlook in the stock market suggests that the market's in a correction and there is zero to 20% exposure from investors across the board. Okay. Now, going into something, as I said a, a, few, a few moments ago regarding sales and earnings, or should I say uh, revenues and sales, let's just take... No way. Let's just take NVIDIA, for example. Well, let's actually, let's look at Tesla, just to put things into perspective, okay? So, if we just go into the daily chart, and down below, I'm not sure if you'll see it. Yeah, you should see it. Here we go. You can see down below here, you've got the quarterly earnings for Tesla, right? Let's just focus on June, if you can see it. June 23, it says that the earnings were 20% up, and the sales were 47% up. Then we go into the September 30th, 2023 quarter, we got earnings at minus 37 and the sales went plus 9%. Okay. And then we go into the December 31st, 2023, earnings were minus 40% and sales were plus 3%. So if we see this sort of behavior happening in the other stocks like Meta, like for example, let's just take Meta. Okay. Go to Meta platforms and let's have a look at their quarterly earnings you can see how Meta is smashing it. So from June 30th, 2023, you've got 31% on the earnings, 11% on the sales. This September 30th, 2023, you've got 168% on the earnings, 23% on the sales. And then we go into December 31st, you've got 203% on the earnings and 25% on the sales. Statistically, Meta is a good stock. Why? because it's showing acceleration in both earnings and 
sales. That means that the product they're providing and the service that they already have going is actually garnering interest. People are using Meta for purchases for these. Uh, here's an example. I went and brought these Ray-Ban glasses, okay, with the ability to record. I only found out that you can live stream with these glasses. However, you can only live stream on Instagram. What a joke. Yeah, I needed to do my homework but they're good for the sun. And it takes little one minute videos, which is pretty cool as well. Great for shorts, which is what I'm looking to do with those and record the screens, happy days. So you can imagine, there's something that Meta sells. Cool, what about advertising? Happy days, let's sell, let's um, advertise Traders Reality. Let's go onto Facebook. I'm gonna use their service, awesome. What about on the, um, the Oculus? Look at the subscriptions on there. How many people are buying Oculuses? So Meta is effectively providing a service for people to take on. Hence the acceleration in the earnings and the sales. That is awesome in my opinion. That's what we need to see. So hypothetically earnings for Meta, that needs to come in above 203% and above 25% in sales. That's a big request given that it's not stopped moving up for the past, what, since September last year, it hasn't stopped moving up, okay? Now, if we do get these earnings announcements from the Magnificent Seven and they keep on going, then dearly beloved, Bitcoin ain't gonna have a problem marking up. It won't. From the higher time frames perspective, we go to the four hour time frame. we can see that we have got quite an interesting area over here with red vector candles. These are important zones for us. Why? Because it suggests to us that this is where they were buying the Bitcoin and principal would say from the bids point of view that we would expect them to start marking back up towards these zones. Okay. So as spot traders, this could be an opportunity. As holders of Bitcoin, it's irrelevant. You're just going to buy it regardless. So looking for Bitcoin to go from 66 to 70, you ain't selling your Bitcoin. If you just want to know if you're buying Bitcoin at a decent discount, this could be deemed as a discount within this 66K range. If we zoom out on Bitcoin and we look at it from the daily time frame perspective, you might say to yourself, yeah, we got a little bit of a structure going off here. If Bitcoin can sustain itself above the cloud, then there's a good chance that Bitcoin could go above the cloud. But if the news announcements this week do not follow through, and Bitcoin might have a little bit of a trouble breaking higher. Now, let's just go over to the stock market for five minutes, because if Bitcoin's following the stock market, then we need to know what the stock market's doing. So, <clears throat> look at the stock market. It's coming down, okay? You've also got a nice move to the upside, which is exactly what I traded today. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And this is where we start getting into it, okay? All right, let's have a look. Okay, so this is where I am right now. So today we took advantage of a few trades. Now, we made 14 trades, we got a 92% win rate, which is irrelevant. And we come out with $4,046 after our fees. Now this is on our funded accounts. We go over to this and that puts us on our balance for our funded accounts at $123,482. So if last week was 116, now we're at 123 because for some reason it wasn't connecting. And here are our balances right now across our funded accounts. Got a couple of new funded accounts here that I'm starting to grow as well. So we're slowly but surely growing those. And the idea is that I'm going to be withdrawing from these. I've already made withdrawals, so I've had those withdrawals approved. And that's going to be coming off these three balances right here. And then we're just going to try and make back that balance. Just want to stay above the 20K range on each account because 20K gives me a buffer, which means that I'm now going to start using more size and then hopefully just, just effectively make back the amount on the account that is being used hypothetically. Okay, so that puts us in that. And I'll just show you my entry points today. Right. So this is where we start talking about the bid and the ask. So because I'm not at my screens, I don't have my computers, um, have my screens that I've got going normally, this is what I was looking at today. I had the vector candles on the S&P on the left side of this little screen that I've got, and then I've got the bid and the ask on the depth of market in front of you. Now, it looks a little bit crazy, okay? But this is what I was paying attention to. The blue areas here, these were my entry points, all right? 
Now, at the time of the trade, I was looking at the depth of market. Now, you can see up here, there was 14,610 contracts traded at the 5,024. This is relevant. This is very relevant because it's the same thing that you will do on Bitcoin. Okay? But the S&P is a little bit different because it's futures markets, a little bit more money moves into the S&P rather, uh, rather than Bitcoin, okay? Now, <clears throat> my entry points were around the 5,019, and we just quickly go into the entry points over here. And this one right here, I opened up two trades. So 5,019, was the entry and we exited at 5,023. Now, you can see that my entry point was here, 5,019, and we exited at the top side over here. Why did I exit at that point, okay? Well, the reason I got out of that point on that account is because I'm not interested in keeping risk on. That's not my style of trading, okay? I'm about fast in, fast out, that's it. If I can load up on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at the time it was, how many accounts did I trade today? I traded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight accounts today, okay? Why do I need to do anything else? I'm not looking for big moves, I'm looking for surefire moves, and this area here was a surefire move in the principle of the bid and ask, why? So you can see here, you see the bids? Lots of bids, 12, 1,230 bids in the book. Okay, these guys were protecting price. Okay, at some point they'd be coming back into that. 603 on the offers. So the bids were effectively eating up the offers. Anyone that had to sell, they were going in and taking it, taking it, taking it. They were bidding, they were lifting the ask. Okay, now if we go up to this area here where we've got the 14,610, further up from there was the point of control. But then what happened down here, or should I say at this point, 14,610, that's where the point of control changed. Now, that's where I got rid of my position. Granted, it did shoot up from that point, but if we actually look at the time the trade actually happened, what time was it in? I got in at half past 10 UK time. Yeah, so 10.28 and got out at 10.39. Oh no, is that 23? Actually, tell a lie, it was higher. Sorry, I've got out of 5,030. Wait a second. Where was my exit? 5,023 there. Here we go. 5,023, 5,019. Okay, so I've got 10 points there. So where did I get out 5,030 from? 5,030, 5,024. I don't even remember. Okay, so it looks like we did actually get out 5,000. Oh, that's when I added to a trade. Yeah, I added to the account. That's correct, yeah. So we scalped above the point of control, okay? And price continued to move from this point. But the reason, what you've got to look for if you do trade off the depth of market, when you see price, can you, can you see how there's very minimal contracts here? You've got 8,000, 4,000, 5,000 here. Look at where the liquidity is. That right there is a high probability trade to scalp into it to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 ticks. If you're not happy with 15 ticks, then you're never going to be happy with whatever profit you make in the market. Same thing applies to BTC. So basically, this is what I did. It was this little pump earlier on. Where was it? It was this area here, this pump right here. That was the pump, okay? and it came back down towards and ate all of those bids right there. Came up towards that 5,037 and rolled all the way back down to the 5,024. All of these bids marked up and then they all came and cleared them out and moved them down. So now let's get this and make it in relation to Bitcoin. How can we utilize this information on BTC, right? So let's go into Bitcoin. Here we go, right. Here's your bid and your ask image. What do you see? You see that? Stick with me here. You see this? Zoom out. You see price at that point. This is on the S&P, right? And this is how you're going to understand how the bid and ask relationship works. 
up here in the depth of market I haven't got all the levels set you're only allowed 20 levels okay there was more than like because there was only 603 contracts in these areas here on the on the ask right here there are more contracts up here that we can't see there are investors up here placing orders all right that's what that area there tells me. It tells me that there's people up here bidding and there's people up here offering, okay? Go into Bitcoin, what do you see? Where do you see that similar structure right now? I wanna know if you know. I wanna know if you know. Are you guys with me on this? Tinder's reality. I don't, you know what? Not many people trade off the depth of market. And this is where you're missing out. Because how are you making sense of a candlestick? We get a clue about the candlestick when we see the green vectors. Okay? And that tells us that there's been a lot of offers. There's been a lot of marking up. There's been a lot of market maker building his shorts, selling. Okay? Do you see the same thing on this chart that you would? on the bid and offers right here. If you see it, give me a hey ya. Yeah, you know what, I'll get rid of the face. I'll get rid of my face. There's no point, because the lights are terrible. Yeah, it's lots of offering, yep. Those lines are liquidations. Yes, these are liquidation points. I see people selling. There you go. It's this area right here. Tell me why that's no different to this. Can you see that? This is where price is on the S&P. They came up towards that point. That was the logic of me trading it earlier on. Do we see the same logic? What's going on up there? Tells me that there's a lot of people wanting to offer. So the guys who have been bidding Bitcoin to the downside are now looking to sell. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Bullish on, all right, do we keep the face on? Yes or no? I wanna know. Yes to face, no to face. Face on, off. I want to know. Not that it's relevant. Not that you need to see my face. See people selling. How far from price do you look? Was watching those offers that, through the night. Well, you've got to look at the... The market always has... The market does have a great memory. Okay? And if you look at this point right here on Bitcoin, and we go across... We don't really see the data. We would have to be watching this chart every single day. But what we know is inside this area, this is where the bids were in this area here. OK, so logic says that if these guys have been bidding Bitcoin, now's an opportunity for them to start selling. And if we do see Bitcoin pump this evening, the logic would say that we would expect them to go and clear that zone. That's how you effectively build the logic of a high probability trade. Okay? Face on, 65%, 212 of you are voting. How on earth are 228 votes coming through? And we only have 368 likes. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, it's, what time is it? It's half past 10 UK time, which is half past 12 for me in Cyprus. This is rough. When MT4 stream. <laughs> Listen, I'm being straight with you. Look, check this out. Tesla shareholders are bracing for the worst seven years. Go to Tesla and the sell-off is probably more than likely going to continue, especially from Asian investors. Look, like, like, this is terrible. And Tesla doesn't care about gap downs. Like, look, they're selling, selling, and they ain't closing no gap, which is going to be a problem for Bitcoin tomorrow if it doesn't sustain itself because Tesla is declaring earnings tomorrow. Look, here we go, we're going into tomorrow, Tuesday 23rd, Tesla, and it's gonna be at the close of the market. What a joke. 
So the market tomorrow could be getting, could be very interesting. Could be very interesting. Don't like my face, that's rough. This reminds me of back in the day when I thought you were a bold white British guy. No way. <laughs> All right then, cool. They ain't doing no Cyprus vlog, man. Yes, the cyber truck itself is being recalled because of the accelerating pad. There's something wrong with the pad, it's the accelerator. Uh, it keeps coming off, which could potentially trap the person in a situation where the accelerator doesn't pull off and he gets trapped right into the chassis, but whatever it is. Okay. Any questions regarding the bid and ask of Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions? Tina, why do they allow price to move to where people are bidding and selling? Like, let me just put my face back on, just so it's all good back with the program. Like, here's your, here's your poll right there. Even though, face on yes, here we go. Here we are, happy days. So a question come in. Um, Tino, why do they allow price to move to where people are bidding and selling? Doesn't that mean they are going to make money at the expense of MMs? Well, who says these aren't MMs? These aren't just people in cryptocurrency. People all over the world. There you go, 8.96 million traded at that point. We don't know if these are equity hedge investors. We don't know if they're mutual funds. We don't know if it's BlackRock. We don't know if it's some dude at home or some guy in Cyprus loading up on BTC. You, we don't know. We don't know what their, what their long-term behavior is. But when you look at what's going on in the stock market, how investors are really, you know, they're trying to remove exposure, as we've established over here, market in correction, 0% to 20% exposure. Look at how many stocks are up on volume. 346 stocks are up on volume, but when you actually look at the volume across the board, it's down. NASDAQ volume is down 12%, okay? It's a terrible day. Let me just show you. Look at the NASDAQ chart right here. Here we go. Look, volume right there. That's a little blue bar down there if you can see it, okay? That's not above average. That's terrible. It needs to be above the red line to suggest that accumulation's coming into play. We have had an accumulation day, but volume is below the average. So it doesn't classify as an accumulation day. It just, it's just a volatile day. They didn't really buy stock. They didn't really sell stock. Even though 346 stocks are up today, must mean that it's just a recovery from last week's battering. But the volume isn't there on the NASDAQ, so that's a bit of a problem. That could mean that it's just weak hands buying, buying up. We don't want to see weak hands, we want to see proper hands, we want to see the guys loading up. And those of you that really want to know if the stock market's going to go up or not, you want to pay attention to Aussie Yen. Pay attention to it. That's one thing I give you. When this bad boy goes up, that's good news because it's the carry trade principle where they go and take dollars or yen, use those dollars and then convert them into Aussie, which then they would use Aussie to go and buy stocks because Aussie is deemed as a high yielding asset. Dollar and yen are low yielding. And right now we're going in a little bit of a change and Aussie could be giving us a clue as to where it's going to end up, which could then suggest that the stock market could be going down because if investors are using Aussie to buy stock, then they could be slowing it down because there's a green vector candle down here that could suggest that they might actually want to sell, which means Aussie goes down, dollar goes up, euro goes down, Bitcoin goes down, stock market goes down. And Tesla's going to get the party started off tomorrow with the worst news announcements for it or its earnings in the last seven years. You only need to pay attention to the dollar. Where's the dollar? Look at it sideways. I don't like it when it's sideways, but trust me, I'd love to see it drop because then that means everything else across the board goes up. But the problem that you've got is a, low, a dropping dollar. Why would you want to hold US stock? It's deemed worthless. You're holding stock that is not as valuable as it was. Right now, the dollar is appreciated by 5%, 5.7%. It's now a good time to sell your stock. 
because you're getting more value of dollars from your stock. But if you wait for the dollar to drop down and lose a whole percentage point on the dollar and it goes all the way down to 104, even 103, 600, you're holding on to stock that's losing value even though it's trading high. So this is, what, this is why the earnings announcements are critical for the stock market, but more importantly, Bitcoin. Bitcoin needs that help from the stock market because the guys in crypto are always going to be in crypto. We need ETF money. <laughs> that, that is the truth. And if you disagree with me on that, please tell me. If you don't think that Bitcoin can continue its move or take the all-time high without BlackRock and the gang picking up ETFs, let me know. I, I want to know. I really do. Put it in the comments. Because we're, we're nowhere near the idea of Bitcoin doing its own thing. We're not. We need ETF help. ETF, ETF, we do. And that's where the big money comes in. I, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You know? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sir XRP. Well, we, obviously, there's been a bit of a problem with XRP going back into the vector candle recovery. I mean, we kind of we, we kind of we, we knew this was likely to happen. And let, let me explain something to you guys. When you're trading, the vocabulary that you need to be using are likely, probable, most likely, unlikely. There is nothing indefinite. There is nothing guaranteed. Peter Lynch said it. You are terrific in this business if you are right six times out of ten. Do you understand that? Six times out of ten. So if you're right 60% of the time, you are terrific in the game of trading. If you are right five times out of ten, you are pretty good. If you are right four times out of ten, you're doing well. That's all risk. Okay? How is it someone can have a win rate of 50% and still make 15 racks in a day? How can someone make nine, have 92% win rate and be down? How is that possible? Because that 8% that he's losing, it's eating his profits because he's holding on to losers too long. Okay? Keep that in your minds. Any other questions? How's Bitcoin daily for the holders and the swingers looking? <laughs> how, many how many swingers are there in the chat? <laughs> that's, that, that's a funny question. That's a funny question. <laughs> This dude can't even afford light bulbs, and there's light bulbs on. What a guy! You obviously need some shades, my bro. Look, I'm not even in my own house, bro. Like, I'm overseas. I'm working off a portable screen. Coming at me with the can't afford light bulbs. Please, bro, get out. Um, no comment. <laughs> Where are the, listen, none of you have answered yet. How many swingers are there? Oh my days. I thought this was the swingers chat. Nah, nah. <laughs> nah, you got it the wrong way, bro. This is the trader's reality stream, bro. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of innuendos in this live stream. Only swinger by night, okay. I'm, I'm in Cyprus, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not where I'm normally at, okay? We've come to see a few doctors. No, I'm not drunk. I'm actually nil by mouth. I can't do anything. I can't drink anything. I can't smoke anything. I can't eat anything. And it's been like that since 10 o'clock this evening, Cyprus time. And I've got to wait until 10 o'clock in the morning, get, get the bloods taken. So, yeah, I'm going to get violated tomorrow. All right, then. Let's talk for the swingers, for the swingers and the holders. <laughs> All right, then. For my swingers. Red vector candle. 
What do you want me to say to you? See, I can say that because I've seen, I've seen thousands and thousands of vectors get recovered. And I only can associate myself with the probable outcome of this happening. They could be recovering that vector candle. How much of it is going to be relying on how well the earnings announcements come into play? But if they do not come out with good earnings, we could get a bit of the recovery of this red vector candle on the three-day chart. Check this out. Take midpoint of this vector candle. So we've surpassed the midpoint of this whole candlestick. But I want to know about the vector. So you then take the Fibonacci of the red vector high and the low of the red vector candle. This is our range. This is a very important range in my opinion. Bitcoin can easily come up towards that point. But it can easily reverse from that point. It could take another day or so or until Tesla or Microsoft or Alphabet, Google on their earnings announcements, that could, that could trigger a markup. They miss and then bang, Bitcoin comes down. You're probably going to get sideways price action for a little while or maybe going into the earnings. But when we're looking at the 5 and 13 EMA from that principle, you do nothing, in my opinion. Look at it. They're both flat. There's no volatility, but that's on the three day chart. You go to the daily chart, you can see that the 5 and 13 EMA ever so closely, you can see that they want to try and get back up above the 50 EMA. Look, you can see 5 and 13. Now remember, moving averages are laggard, but we're talking about the daily here. And the higher the time frame, the more, there can be more weight to the moving average as a confluence in your trading, okay? Uh, yeah, listen, this is true. I don't drink and I don't smoke the green, all right? And if I did, I would get really messed up, most definitely. I'm great to go out on a night out, a shot of tequila, finished. I am finished. Beer, not even going to say anything because I won't be able to say anything. And that's, that's, that's been the truth. That has been the truth. Don't get it twisted. We had our fun back in the day, but I'm 39 now. I don't look it, but that's another story. Anyways, any other questions? T, when will the Japanese bank... Why did I say that? T, when Japanese bank will, 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 will step into Bitcoin, what? When will the Japanese bank step into action and pump JPY? Friday. Friday's their day, ladies and gentlemen. Friday is the Bank of Japan's policy rate. You're probably going to see dollar yen trading sideways for the majority of this week, in my opinion. Um... How, Tino, how do you know, how do you establish if the market maker is building positions or taking profits? Can the market be trending in both scenarios? Yeah. When price is going up, he's offering his shorts and closing his longs. He's, it's doing, he's doing it simultaneously. Okay. And market maker is about delta neutral. His goal is to offset his exposure as soon as he physically can. Remember when we were talking about Bitcoin being gamma neutral for the dealers? And that meant that the dealers who were going short, right now there are dealers who are short on Ethereum. There are dealers who are short on Bitcoin. But in order to cover themselves, they need to step in and buy Bitcoin and Ethereum on spot. Okay? So that means that's what happens when you are gamma neutral. When you're trying to get to that, ga sorry, it's gamma negative. Okay? When you're gamma negative, you're effectively holding a short but buying spot in case there is volatility to the upside that you can profit on. So you're buying high and you're selling lower. So as it's pulling back, you're selling. Okay? That's what dealers, market makers are effectively doing. Okay? And this is why this is a critical point for Bitcoin and Ethereum. We go into Ethereum quickly. You can see Ethereum has got red vector candles. 
but it's got a big, it's, Ethereum really need. it's got a lot of work to do Ethereum has because the vectors down below at the 2645 could be a problem for us and the moving averages could be an even worse a problem because there are points of interest in the chart. So you, it, it could be very interesting going into this week. We need to see silly news announcements, positive expectations and returns and high robust earnings announcements from the Magnificent Seven to justify movements to the upside. If we don't get it and it's mixed, there's a good chance that Bitcoin and Ethereum and crypto are going to consolidate, in my opinion. Um... Tino, can the hybrid system be used in one to five minute trading? Hybrid system can be used in one to five minute trading, ladies and gentlemen. Five minute time frame, you can see bright as day, right there. There's a strategy on the hybrid system called the first green vector candle and the five minute time frame, okay? And it's a strategy where you're waiting for a green vector candle to appear above the 50 EMA. There's a criteria to it because you can see there's lots of green vector candles on Ethereum and it's the same with Bitcoin itself. Um, Tina, what do you think the earnings are going to be? I think the, the fact that the market's risk is off, right? Market is in correction and exposure is between 0 to 20%. I think they're already accepting the fact that the earnings might not be as good as they expect it to be, in my opinion. Okay. Right, what time are we on, ladies and gentlemen? How late is it? Oh, my days, 40 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long stream. Forgive me, okay? So, sorry about the lighting, that'll be fixed tomorrow, but mad love and respect. Hope you learned a thing or two. Be sure to like and subscribe on the way out, and I'll be checking in with you all tomorrow morning. Take care of yourselves, gang. Mad love. Peace.